Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your now bi-weekly pre-show here on Renegade Radio, Steelways Radio, all the podcast catchers, Spotify, Stitcher, Pod Chaser, Podcast Addict. We just got it added on to YouTube. Everywhere you listen to the podcast, it's the Dark Mark Show. I am Dark Mark, the goth comedian, and it's the most wonderful time of the year. Isn't it, Hannah? It, is. it definitely is. I just wish the weather Ash would Michael. match up. <laughs> There's always got to be a complaint with you, but that was my co-host. <laughs> Everybody's favorite heavy metal DJ, Hannah Bob. Hey, hey guys. Spooky season Hi, Hannah, ahead. Is- Hi. Yep. Well, if you're watching on YouTube, the hot weather will probably give you a chance to watch my makeup melt during the show. But <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year because it is Hall- Halloween season. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though... There'll be no trick or treating. Apparently, that's outlawed this year. And now, I guess you can't even have entertainment outside. I have people that uh, have been putting on shows. They're all being canceled. The comedy store's not doing comedy outside anymore. What? We're still going to have a Halloween here. And we've got so many guests that want to be on the Dark Mark show. Yeah. I, it was a surprise to me, but uh, we've got so many guests that want to be on the Dark Mark show. We're actually doing two shows a week and maybe mm-hmm. three on the Halloween. So, uh, and we have quite a guest today. Uh, she is an actress, a dancer. So, Hannah, get your dancing questions ready. Uh, <laughs> she is a martial artist. She is a writer, and she is going to be the director of the upcoming movie Christmas Slasher, starring uh, the guy that was Xander in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I don't know his name. Uh, Nicholas Brandon. <laughs> Nicholas Brandon, and the the girl who was in uh, uh, Sleepaway Camp. Felissa Rose. <laughs> Rose. <laughs> But that, that's what we have, uh, and, and our friend uh, William Sin is going to be in it. All sorts of people. It's going to be exciting. We've got uh, Destiny Soria. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hello. My hand is not caught. <laughs> You're back. Did I it, though. Soria? Yeah. Or Soria? <laughs> Soria? Hmm. Your name? Hmm. Destiny. Your last name is Soria? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Soria. Yep. Soria. Soria. Okay. I'm yeah. Sorry. You did good. No, you said you, you still did good. I, I anglicized it, which I'm not supposed to do these days. It's okay. You did good. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and we, so we, this is this is the, our first guest on Halloween month. We've already mm-hmm. got booked uh, uh, later on this week. Our friend Dustin Ferguson, who is uh, going to be filming the upcoming movie Amityville in the Hood, Ooh. is going to be joining us later on. Uh, actually, if you're listening to us on uh, on Renegade Radio or Steel Waves Radio right after us. And uh, he and I are going to be doing our top 10 Halloween movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have uh, Geno Side, who is a stunt performer, fire performer, uh, six foot two uh, professional weirdo. We have <laughs> the Rhythm Coffin are going to come on and they just have a new song out on YouTube with a cartoon video for Coffin Creep. You definitely want to check that out. And they're going to teach us how to make ghoulish goulash. And <laughs> Casey Nelkin. The star of Halloween 3 will be on the show uh, in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. we got more and more guests coming up. Uh, and, uh, Destiny, we're going to get to you in a second. Real quick, uh, go to uh, our sponsors, Raise Energy Drinks. This is oh, the best, flavor. best energy drinks. I know my energy drinks. Zero carbs, zero calories, zero crash. Go to the, uh, go to the link in YouTube or the podcast description, you get 15% off. You also can get 20% off Hustler Hollywood, 20% off Spy Associates. Uh, you can go to our link, uh, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. Get a scary book and a scary Audible original. And uh, go to Doomy's Home Cooking. Uh, Destiny, I don't know if you're a vegan. I like meat. <laughs> yeah, what? I like meat too, but you would love Doomy's Home Cooking. I had the Vegan chicken cordon bleu last year, last week. It was delicious. Oh, that does sound good. I mean, I try anything. I love food, so okay. you'll love it. Twelve fifty three Rhine Street. They mm-hmm. have uh, they have uh, a, a chicken Alfredo pasta. They have uh, the biggest flautas I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, the nachos were voted one of the ten best nachos in LA. Twelve fifty three Rhine Street. If you're in LA, Culver City, they have a restaurant and also Toronto, Canada. So. Oh, I tried to do those real fast because last week that it took ten minutes. So, uh, Destiny, you have an interesting story. 
Uh, you were uh, born, um, you were born in Georgia, is that correct? Or Savannah? Yep, Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an interesting upbringing in Savannah. You, uh, you traveled a lot. I, we have that in common. You traveled a lot when you were a kid. Yep. I, um, yeah, I'm an army brat. So I, I, I was born in Savannah, Georgia, but we never lived there. So we like kind of drove through it and my mom just gave birth to me there. <laughs> But we like we lived in uh, North Carolina, and we okay. lived uh, in Germany. My brother was born in Frankfurt, Germany, and mm -hmm. then we uh, we pretty much lived, you know, the rest uh, here in uh, San Antonio, Texas, with all my family. So all my family's from from here. But yeah, we we traveled a lot and we moved a lot. <laughs> are you, what are was you your favorite? Right now? My my favorite place to live. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually. I live, I moved to Minnesota and I, I was there for 10 years and that was my favorite mm -hmm. place to live, even Minnesota. with my, like not my yeah. family that mm -hmm. went, but I'm actually moving back hopefully this year or next year. I want to move back to Minnesota because it's, I love the snow and I have mm -hmm. really amazing friends there and, and I just love uh, how beautiful it is and how relaxing it is there. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I'm not a Texas person. I don't like to yeah. eat here. <laughs> I don't yeah, like yeah. Is the heat <laughs> pretty bad right now? now? Um, today it's really cool and nice, but it, it yeah, it gets super hot for me. Oh. Yesterday was really hot, and then today just like there was a core, uh, cold front, and it mm -hmm. was really nice, the wind. That's the nice. Wind. Send yeah. it over here. <laughs> You're definitely not going to like But uh, I just uh, so, so my audience knows, you've been on quite a few uh TV and movies. You got like 125 credits on IMDb. Very impressive. We have Daniel Roebuck, the character actor, on. He's got over 500. He says he's the he's he's the king. He beat uh, John Carradine, but you're getting there. Yeah, I would be the queen then. Yeah, I, I just love being on set, no matter what. I just love being. You on had, you had a, a small role on Dallas. You had a small role on Shameless. Uh, you were in uh, such such scary, creepy movies as. Uh, um, Apartment 407, The Last Fitness Instructor, Wolf Trap, uh, Halloween Pussy Trap, Kill Kill. Uh, you can see what it looks like. Uh, Sophie Gold, The Diary of a Gold Digger. I don't know what that is. Uh, the Dreamscape Nightmare, Opposite, The Opposite Blood, Death Kill. I'm just going by your IMDb. It's great. Blood Harvey. It just gets creepier as you go along. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's like it's starting to get more creepy, creepy. It's like I want more horror. I want to be a more horror. Texas Tall Tales, mm -hmm. uh, Witchula, Witchula. I'll talk about Witchula later. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, Clockwork, uh, Baby Doll. Uh, oh, Toilet Zombie, Baby Strikes Back. All sorts of great movies. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so, but uh, Minnesota is really where you uh, where well, you form. Well, I wasn't born. I was. I, I was I mean, where you're from where you were where you really became yourself yeah like yeah where I where I feel like I, I was reborn like that was where I feel like I was born and and I miss it and love it and yep I can't I can't wait to move back that's where I, I belong right yeah but um how you got into acting is where is a very unusual story because um apparently it was because of uh, a Robert Patterson and his glittering uh, aura <laughs> you became an actor is that right yeah he um uh, I, I started acting in Duluth or, uh, Minnesota, Remy, Minnesota. That's where I live, but Minnesota brought me to where I am today. And the fact that where I used to live was, uh, it, it was very bad. It was very, uh, very racist place. Mm -hmm. And I was a victim of a hate crime, uh, 2018. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, very stupid, very very ugly. It was very, very mm. evil. And sometimes I don't like talking about it because I, I tend to cry. <laughs> I tend well, to cry. You don't have to talk about it, but let me tell you, <laughs> there's no such thing as a racist hate crime. But uh, um, in a way, um, I mean, obviously no, nobody wants that to happen, but uh, it, you you uh, you turned it into a positive in that you started, yeah. you started yeah. uh, taking martial arts and you started acting. Yeah, it, it, it made me grow stronger. Um, scars they make you have strength because i have it right here the scar and it just made me go further in life and you know be better and fight the negativity with positive and yeah it, it, it 
I was like staying in my house for a year because of that. They don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want to be around anybody. And then <laughs> I saw a trailer for the Twilight, and I was like, "That's really interesting." And I'm all because I'm into all that, and I was like, "I want to go see it." So I saw it when it came out, and I saw him, and I was like, "I want to be an actor too." I just went like that. I, I my friend was there, and I'm like, "I want to be an actor." I he. I like this guy. Like I, there's something yeah. about this guy, and then I just been following him ever since. Well, he's dreamy you know. cute. That's why he is. He's dreamy, but it just he's so intelligent and very smart, and he is a very good, good actor. And he's so a, he's I, not to be a great actor. I had to convince Hannah that he was a good actor when he uh, became the announcer for Batman. I said, you "Gotta watch Good Time," and then you watch Good Time, Hannah, and you were. Mm-hmm. He was. He's good. He has like that. I don't know something about him and. I just followed in his footsteps and became an actor too. Yeah. Um, he helped me because I have a hard time with speci- uh, I have speech disorder, learning mm-hmm. disability, and, and a couple, uh, I have ADHD, see, so I have hard time. And so he helped me get to where I need to be mm-hmm. in the acting world and acting classes. And it helped me out so much with memorizing and, and speaking a little bit better. So I started falling in love being an actress and doing these different roles and these different characters. And it helped me become the person I am today and, and speak and, 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 and be open with more, you know, be open with people. And, you know, I know I'm going to be judged. I know I always have been judged. I always get picked on and bullied, but I, it never, they never stopped me from being who I really want. And that's to, to you, don't, you don't still get picked on and bullied. I would hope not. Yeah. And, and, and and to be a director, like this is going to be my first feature film. I've done short films. Wolf Trap is one of my films. It's silly, but I do silly skits and I love oh, it because I like mm-hmm. I like to make people laugh. Yeah, it's it's nice to like um, make people feel good and kind of yeah. you know show them your talent. And how does it feel after you wrap with a project? I feel happy. I feel yeah. like I, I, I accomplished something. I've accomplished this character. And, and sometimes I'm always like, did I do okay? Did I do okay? Because I get worried and I want them to, to, I want them to have the best of me on set and to put this role, you know, alive. And, and, and I, I get worried and stuff afterwards, like, did I do okay? And they're like, yes, you did. I'm like, okay. Because sometimes I'm like, when I'm in the moment, I don't know if I'm doing it right. Or like, or I forget, and so mm. that that always solves. I'm all, I'm my, what you call it, my own cri- critic. I'm my own critic. That has I yeah, your own worst critic. critic. Yeah, we are. It's yeah, true. we are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but if you're in the moment, then and and as they say cut, and they said it was okay. That means you did you did it right. You yeah. may not know because your headspace was elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I know I've been there. Yeah, I I do that all the time. And I always have to double check. You're like, no, you did okay. I'm like, okay. I just want to know. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, what the fuck happened to Taylor Lautner? What happened to that guy? Yeah, what did happen to him? Yeah, I, you know, like Kristen Stewart still got, she's doing great. She's actually turned out to be a tremendous actress herself. Robert Pattinson's um, great. And Taylor Lautner, I don't know what the, what the hell he's doing. I think he's like, I know he's doing some projects, but I think it's on the low low. And I think he's just like, you know, not you know, do, you know, just keeping out of the public, but I actually wanted to, like, see if I can have him in, in my new movie. I was going to say, <laughs> if you can get another, like, $5,000, I'll bet you can get him in Christmas last year. I, I, maybe I, not even that, maybe a thousand. I, I, I mean, I got everybody for this one, but I have a new one that I'm doing in of next year. It's a horror sci-fi about the snow, and I think he'll be cool in that one, too. Right. I would love to have him on something because I know he's there. Everybody's now doing a lot of indie films, and that's pretty cool that you know they're giving you know indie filmmakers a chance to be in their movies and stuff like that. So that's really cool. And well, I was like really happy to bring aboard Nicholas Brandon and and um, Phyllis. Well, Phyllis Rose always is a horror icon, but yeah, I wasn't sure about Nicholas, like if he was going to do it or not, because it's like well, an indie film. But yeah. And honestly, they need the money. I mean, it's it's not to they got to make a living. Is what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, yeah. You know, I, 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 when I was a kid, I was thought like everybody was on TV or everybody in movies was a millionaire, but mm-hmm. they live on job to job. 
you know? Yeah. yeah. And you, you know, you're a working actress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's okay. I mean, I, I'm not, I think to, to me, it's more passionate uh, to just to be on set. I'm just more passionate about it than worrying about if it's money or not. Uh, sometimes I do stuff for free if, it, if it's a really good story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's, uh, if you're, and this is, you know, talking to actors, they're just, they're sitting there. It's. Well, this year, yes, because. They're auditioning, they're auditioning, they're auditioning, and, you know, they, sometimes the money runs out. Yeah, that too. And then we have COVID. <laughs> so yeah, that. and also, oh, you know, SAG, yeah. uh, you know, they want to keep their health insurance. Mm-hmm, yeah. So it's been, I don't know, tough for everybody this year. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's tough for you. Cause, go ahead, Hannah. Oh, I was going to say, it sounds like you, you have 2021 already planned with your new movie. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. So you're looking oh, yeah. towards the future? Oh, yeah. Um, we for sure, we, we are for sure shooting next year on that mm-hmm. one. And I'm editing it, so I'm going, that's what I'm going to be doing the whole time is just finishing and editing it up. And then yeah. work on an, another future film. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to be busy. The snow, um, I'm from Alaska, so I grew up with the snow. I'm excited okay. to see what you're going to do with the sci-fi snow. It sounds I, like really interesting. It's called Blood from Snow, and I already uh-huh. have somebody doing the poster and a novel mm-hmm. cover. I'm writing a novel first, and then making it as a, a feature film. And I had a dream about it. I mm-hmm. it, the dream was like I was driving in the snow, and all of a sudden it turned like a reddish, uh, like creepy, really mm-hmm. weird color. Uh-huh. So the snow like is like in frozen. It's frozen in time. It's not moving or anything. So you're mm-hmm. I'm like in this weird uh, dimension kind of thing. And so the car doesn't start. And I'm like, what's <gasps> going on? So I'm like trying to start the car. The car won't start. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to get out and try to push it or get it somewhere. And so I go out and I see other cars and vehicles and buses that are, you know, there's nobody in there. The doors are open, but it's like, it's a death, you know, they left their vehicles. I'm like, what the heck's going on? So I'm like, all right, I don't feel right. I'm going to get out of here. So I like run out of the snow. So it's like, it's like you're in another, like, what, why is the snow only there? But it's like still. And so I run to like, it's like a little small town. So I run to my, which uh, Red Wing, Minnesota, where I live is a perfect mm-hmm. place to shoot it. And it's beautiful there. It's a small town and it's beautiful with the snow. Mm-hmm. So I'm like running to like a, a auto shop that my I guess my best friend is a security there because they're always trying to steal stuff and they're high you know high fancy uh body shop so I'm there and I tell her don't go outside don't go outside there's something going on with the snow did you see the snow and she's like no what are you talking about I'm like just just it's like staying still don't don't go outside it's all red and stuff it turned all red she's like well I'm gonna go take a smoke break I'm like okay but if you if you see the snow coming don't go in it come back inside Mm -hmm. So I go wash myself because they have like those uh, uh, um, when, you're, when you're working. Yeah, when you're working on the car, you can wash the grease off and stuff. So I'm like taking mm-hmm. the snow off because I'm like freaking out. Like, I don't know if there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. And then I hear the news that saying like, don't go outside when the snow is red. Don't go outside. Uh, people have been missing in the snow. It takes like if they stay in the snow a certain amount of time, they disappear. So I was like, what the heck? So I'm running back to the front and pull her in. And we both fall. And she's like, what are you doing? I was like, I told her don't go in when it's snowing like that. And then her, I guess her girlfriend was in the bathroom. She came out and she's like, what's going on? I'm like, is there a back door? Like, do you have a back door? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, but so I run in the back and close it. And all of a sudden there's something opening the door, but it's making these like horrible screaming pain, monstrous noise. And we're trying to close the door on it. And I told the girl to get something so we can like hit it so we can close it. And she's like, what am I supposed to hit? I can't see what it is. And I'm like, just hit, hit the air, hit something, hit between the doorways. So she hits it. We hear it, you know, in pain and we closed it and that's it. That was my dream. And I'm like, Oh, I have to write this down. I got to write this down. And so what I did, when I, I even told my dad, I texted him like, dad, I have the best script. I have the best horror, new horror movie. I'm like, I'm writing it right now. And mm-hmm. so I looked it up and it's called A Watermelon Snow or mm-hmm. Blood Snow or Pink Snow. And it's kind of in the area up north of California and a couple of uh, places. Well, what it is, it's a red algae. It's a red bacteria algae. 
if you eat that, you die. And if wow. you sit in the snow, it dyes your, your clothes and your shoes. And I'm like, dude, this would be so epic. It would be like the happening where the trees are alive, but the snow mutated and made mm -hmm. everybody all invisible but monstrous kind of things. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's an awesome freaking I want to do that. I it is. Do that. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, all right, that's my next movie. I'm going to do a novel first and then just make it next year. So I was like, yeah. that's my, I was like, my dreams are crazy. And, and, and to to see that it's actually a real thing, like an a actual algae, that if you just if you eat the snow with the red and then you die because it's toxic to you. Mm -hmm. I was like, by, by, awesome. by the way, if the, if the snow is yellow, don't eat that either. Oh yeah, don't but, eat that. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, don't eat that either. But yeah, I was like, oh man, I can make it more like a sci-fi where it kind of mutates and makes actually people invisible, you know, monstrous things that mm -hmm. you can't see them. I was like, I've that's. Heard, really I've heard cool. of red rain, but not red snow. Red, right? Oh, yeah, because like the, the I don't remember what's that, but it's like the Red River or the Red Blood uh, yeah, water. There's, there's some, yeah, there's some uh, places where it gets red sometimes. Yep, yep. And I was yeah. like, I, didn't, I did not know that. And seeing pictures of it, ooh, it looks so creepy. There, It's all red. It's covered in cars and trees and stuff. I'm like, ooh, this would be so cool and make a movie mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah. It's so wicked. <laughs> would this be your first novel? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm like following my dad's footstep. He did a, a, a army military story one and he oh, got great. that on uh where he, where he, uh, uh, what is it? What's that bookstore? Uh, Books and Noble. Barnes and, Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble. Yeah. He yeah. got some of his books there. So that was cool. So I was like, oh, I want to I make a novel first. I want to write and then go from there. See how you know, there's yeah. a Dutch day Soria that's a novelist. So you got to yeah. differentiate yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So like, Lady Destiny, I guess something you'll have to figure something out. Yeah, but, yeah. There was somebody who who has my full name that everyone keeps tagging me in. I'm like, who's tagging me in this? I'm like, I didn't make these books. <laughs> and I'm sure she's got the same thing. Like, who's this? I don't know. Yeah, I, was like, well, I don't know who that is. I want to go to her. Like, is that your real name? Is that your real name? Let me see your birth certificate. <laughs> yeah, I think you both yeah. uh, you both figured it out. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's room for both of you. But uh, yeah. so you want so you started doing acting in Minnesota. Did you start doing movies in Minnesota too? Yes. Yep. I started, I did uh, acting classes first and then I got into things that were, you know, like student films, projects here and there just mm -hmm. to get, you know, experience on set, even uh, behind the camera too. And, and just went from there. Yeah. I started oh. doing a lot of films there too. Well, let me ask you a question. And this is one of my patented dark mark indelicate questions that nobody would ask you, but I'm curious about. Um, I've seen you act and I've seen your reels and you seem to have no trouble talking on camera. Is there something that happens when you're in character, when you're on camera, where the speech impediment goes? I don't know. I guess that's why I love acting so much because it actually, it, 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 it just helps. Like it, it, it just helps. And I just, I just go with it. I just go in this like mode, this like, modes I don't know it's just it just happens I guess sometimes I do forget my lines and then I, I just go again but I don't I don't know I think it's just like you it's just being in the moment it just helps because you don't have I mean you, you it's very slight uh whatever mm -hmm. sweet pediment you have but I've yeah. seen you on film and it's it's a completely different accent like every role mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so just does this appearing in a role help you just you're not even conscious of it or you're just so in the moment you just i think so yeah i just, I, I think like i said i'm a totally I, i'm a totally different person when i'm on set and i act and i'm a different person <laughs> okay well maybe we'll get that person in here in a second but anyway christmas slasher is a movie that's coming up to hannah and that was supposed to be filmed in 2020 this is this is one of the uh unfortunate uh covid mm -hmm. things where i better put the light on victims of covid <laughs> yeah, well, one of the unfortunate. There we go. Now you can. Uh, I'm, I'm no, that's creepy. Not scary. Oh, good. That's, that's what I want. Trust me. With, my, with the makeup, the hair, it, it could be. It couldn't be less. Creepy. It could be more. Creepy. <laughs> but uh, awesome. <laughs> you, you did an Indiegogo mm -hmm. to finance Christmas Slasher, and mm -hmm. the goal was fifteen thousand. You've already crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. See, the the when we first when I first started doing the Christmas Slasher, it was going to be a, just a short film. I was going to just do a short film, but. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to get, I had a bad car accident, so I had to get surgery done. So that kind of like didn't help with me focusing on the film. And then 
we did do Indiegogo for the short film. That didn't do too good, but it helped, you know, bring people on board that we needed, that I would love to, you know, that I love to have on. And then, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, COVID hit. Also, we had some really very unprofessional crew members on the film that pretty much uh -oh. ruined pretty much half of my um, film. <laughs> so I had to let them go. So that and also COVID kind of made it stop and just ruin it. And I was like, oh, okay, well, since we're in quarantine, I'm just going to do a future film. Because I was going to do it, but I wanted to like see, like maybe see where it go with the short film. But then everyone, then I was like, wait, let's just do a future film. I can do it. We can do a future film. And then we passed to go and we got some, we got the people back on board that we needed and we just added on. Dude, like right now I'm just adding more stuff to the script because it was, it was, uh, it was 74 pages. Mm -hmm. You have to have like 80 and over to have a feature film. So I just kept adding things and then working well, with the once, Indigo. <laughs> once again, unfortunate things happen to you. Yep. But they turn out to be blessings in disguise and yes, you're able to turn yeah. around and make it something positive. Yep. It's yep. been a theme the last three weeks. We've had a couple guests to come on and yeah. just hopefully, I guess this is going to happen every week, but uh, there's going to be uh, people that uh, find their way out of darkness. But mm -hmm. let me ask you, because Christmas and uh, murder seem to go together, especially on film. <laughs> uh, they really do, Mark. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows the Black Christmas, the, the, the sequel to Black Christmas. Sa uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and the mm -hmm. sequels and the remake, uh, Silent Night, Bloody Night. Well, how is Christmas Slasher different from these movies? Well, um, it was funny because like 2016, I decided that I wanted to do something with like a Christmas kind of thing. And I'm, 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 I love Christmas too. Like Halloween and Christmas are my favorite things, but I wanted to mix, mix match it with something different. Mm -hmm. And, and the fact that I was like, I was thinking about like, you know what? I don't see anything that has to do with Rudolph being an evil monster is zombed out bad guy. Mm. So... I decided, like, hey, I'm going to uh, cross over the clay animated Rudolph Red Nose Reindeer and make him into a bad guy in this one. So the monsters are clay animated, and we have we do have Rudolph as a uh, a bad guy. He he got the sweet, lovable Rudolph with the nose that was picked on his whole life is actually a serial killer. He he turned bad. He's like, he, I'm not playing any more reindeer games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm tired of being picked on. So, he, yeah, he, he turned. He, he got into something he shouldn't have, and he turned, and he turned everybody else. And now he's just after everybody. Uh, no one is safe. Uh, no babies are safe. No children are safe. Nobody is safe. <laughs> is he a zombie reindeer? Is he a vampire reindeer? He's a, he's a zombie reindeer. He's a zombie ra reindeer. Okay. I was going to say, mm -hmm. a vampire reindeer, you'd have to, you, everything would be glittery, not just the nose. And, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> you want no that. he's not zombed out. I mean, he's a vampire. He's a zombie. He turned into a zombie. Just started Zombie like, Rudolph. Because I, I was looking all over this movie. I didn't see the, uh, the mock-up of Rudolph, evil Rudolph. I, I, I guess I didn't look that hard. Oh, the, like, um... It's it says a little bit of, of like who killed Rudolph or it says a little bit. I don't want to say too much about it, but since now it's getting closer to you know, um, to filming, I rather tell people more about who's who like who's the monster, who's behind all the killings and stuff, and it's actually Rudolph. And you play Santa's wife or? No, no, I'm I'm actually one of the survivors, but I'm not saying much because there is a twist at the end. Like I said, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say a lot of things. Y'all gotta watch it because there's yeah. a lot of twists okay. and turns in well, this movie. <laughs> well, no, no, no more plot. We've got we. There is a short on YouTube. Check that out. That gives you mm -hmm. some some background. It's uh, it's a little tease. Yeah, it's a I proof like it. of concept of like what we are going for, but not a, like telling you a lot about it. It's like a little mystery kind of thing. And, and Hannah, it's very bloody. I recommend you will check it out. Yeah. Oh, I've been ready. <laughs> the, it's bloody through the whole movie. I, I want it to be like an 80s. Like Evil but it was Dead. the best, yeah. Yes, Evil Dead, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Mm -hmm. I love those kind. And I'm like, I want something like that. I want through the whole freaking movie to be all bloody and gore and really gross things. And, and the Killer and Clowns wasn't that gross. gross. Yeah, like I want, I like through. The, it's gonna be through the whole movie, so there's no like dull moment. Every year, mm -hmm. somebody's dying, someone's 
getting to get killed. Yeah. <laughs> so by, by, by name dropping Evil Dead and Killer Clowns, I'm assuming there's uh, a lot of humor in this too. Yep. Yeah. There's a little, there's a lot of humor. Um, and we also have, yeah. well, like I said, no one's safe. Babies. Kids, no one's safe. <laughs> everybody dying. <laughs> Whiny little children at Christmas time. Yep, everybody is not <laughs> safe. <laughs> He's coming uh, up after everybody. <laughs> are we going to be on Rudolph's side, maybe? <laughs> Get him, Rudolph. <laughs> yeah, well, no, wait, wait, I wait. hope so. <laughs> I hope he's the hero. <laughs> he's a bad guy, but he's also a hero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, <laughs> but you got quite a cast, including yourself. Mm hmm. And then you got, uh, like I say, you got Xander from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yep. And 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 you really worked to get him, right? Yeah, I I, I just I just asked him. He's like, okay. I'm like, oh. Are you, okay. you guys friends? Are you guys old? Yeah, we're cool. We're like we're cool. We talk we talk all the time. Like I help him out get by his paintings and stuff like that. And yeah, we're good. We're good people. He's a good. He's such a good heart. So he has a good soul. He has a good. How heart. How, how did you meet him? Um, I met him. Through his uh, his website, I talked to him and his, his his manager. We all talked together, and then he he did well. We we did some scenes which we saved. So the short film, like I said, we did uh, we did save some footage, and he was in it. And Felissa Rose, so Felissa Rose's stuff is good. Like it's good. So I don't right. I don't need her for the feature film because I already got that for the feature film. And then Nikki, uh, I had to cut some things out because. There was, you know, unfresh, unfresh, unfreshional people that were no show or just like took off. And I'm like, all right, well, we have to take these out. And so I told him, I asked him, hey, you want to do the feature film? He's like, yeah, I'm down. Okay, cool. Let's do it. And so, yeah, right. we just talk all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was like, he's like one of my good friends. And I, I you know, he's, he's there. He's like, just let me know if you want to do more movies. I'm like, I'm down. Okay, we're, do we're good. We're down. But yeah, he's. We gotta finish some of his scenes anyways and we did some add-ons so i was like all right let's do this future film now like okay <laughs> it's counterintuitive but normally in my experience my limited show business experience the uh more famous the person is the more professional they are mm -hmm. and the nicer they are mm -hmm. usually the ones that uh i have a problem with the people that are you know they're just coming up yeah i i get that a lot <laughs> yeah you know, somebody that's uh you know, people that have been doing it for a while, they just, uh, you know, they're professional. Even if, even if they're not, uh, you know, even if they don't want to, you know, they're, they're too busy to even talk to you, they're nice about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I even, I had, like, like how you uh, message her, and they said, that, you know, they came back to you nicely saying she can't. Uh, Bruce uh, Camel did the same thing, too. I asked him if he wanted to be in it. But during that time, he was uh, doing his tour, you know, the book tour and stuff. Yeah. And they came to me and they said, oh, he can't right now because he's doing this, but we hope that you have, you know, we wish you good luck on your film and can wait right. to see it. So I was like, oh, cool. Thanks, guys. So I was like really stoked that half of the, you know, the these talent people I went for were very nice to talk to me and tell me, you know, we wish you good luck and we can't wait to see it. So I was like, oh, yeah. thank you. So I was like, that's awesome. I really love that. And that, that is really that, sweet. Yeah, that, I was like, see, these people are very, like, I love these people. They're so <laughs> sweet and stuff. And, and, and it's so amazing that they just came to you and started, like, you know, just being nice. Like, I did have one manager. He was kind of rude. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> he was, like, very straightforward. Like, oh, do you have this for him for your slasher film? I'm like, okay, I won't just be, I won't reply back to that then. <laughs> Yeah, but, but yeah. You, can't, you can't win them all, but uh, yeah. I will tell you, uh, Destiny, you and Hannah probably have something in common. Uh, you probably have a lot of things in common, but uh, <laughs> uh, Hannah, uh, Destiny, when she was growing up, wanted to marry Freddy Krueger. I would yep. imagine you were, uh, you, had, you were the same way. <laughs> oh, Freddy Krueger, he's always your go-to because he has a sense of humor. He will yes. not be boring. Yeah. Yep. So keep yep. laughing in the rocking chair. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was just a baby when, when uh, in the eighties, and my mom, she let me watch all like crazy horror Same. films. Yeah. Like we went to the theaters to watch Freddy Krueger. We went to Beetle Juice. Like Freddy Krueger, Beetle Juice, or my my. Oh my god, I have a crush on them. I want to marry them. I can marry both of them. I don't care. But yeah, I was like so in love with Freddy Krueger. I told my mom. They get me with Beetle Juice and Freddy Krueger. Yeah, <laughs> and my mom's like, "That's my girl." Oh. <laughs> but 
yeah, my, me and my mom, we used to watch a lot of, like, black and white movies and, and watch a lot of, uh, like, Costello, like, all the horror ones. And then Freddy mm-hmm. Krueger and Buffy and just all that. And, Did and, you like Tales from the Crypt? Yes, Tales yeah. from the Crypt was one of my favorites. Uh, I just, I just adore and love it. And I thought he was cute too. I yeah, his little laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, think he, I was like, oh my god, it's so cute. Like every time he comes out, me and mom got watching bed and eat popcorn and be just like, I love this guy. He's so cute. Oh, we used to do that too with the little antenna TV. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. yeah. Was, oh, I miss those so much. Hey, actually- see, here, here it is, horror movie bonding. It'd be hard to put the ring on his finger with the with the blades, though. I would think. I know. <laughs> I would carry him. So, which is your favorite uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie? It would be the first one. The first one, and then the one uh, where the what are they called? The Warrior Night Dream, Dream Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, yeah, I like that one too. That was yeah, awesome. me too. I thought that was cool. It's like they're starting to fight back. And, and Jackie Earl Haley didn't didn't do it for you. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's just that just I don't know what they were thinking on that one, but yeah. uh, mm-hmm. he's a good actor too. It just just you can't you gotta have England. If you can't have England, just forget it. No. But Kevin Bacon's coming up. How do you feel about that? If Jackie Earl Haley couldn't do it, Je- Kevin Bacon can't do it. Come on. I don't Kevin, think he, I don't know. No. I kind of I kind of have a little bit of hope in him because he plays a really good psychopath, and he's one of my favorite actors. What movie did he play? That was a psychopath. Um, Sleepers. Remember, he was the n- nasty guard. Stir of Echoes, uh, Criminal mm-hmm. Law. He's been he's been a psycho in a few. Mystic River. He was a bad guy. He's been a bad mm-hmm. guy. Few things. I'm gonna have to look relook at that again because yeah, I don't know. But Jackie O'Haley well, plays good psycho. And he couldn't pull off crap Freddy Krueger. Like I didn't I didn't like the that other guy play Freddy Krueger. No, yeah, no. yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What's wrong with his face?" He just yeah, like, he looked like a cat or something. Like okay. weird. Like, you got him at the dollar store, Freddie. Right I was ass. like, I did yeah. not like the new Freddie. Not at all. I, I bad makeup. Nope. Bad yeah, makeup. I'm like, no. Well, no, I, 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 I'll let you know. <laughs> I also found it interesting that uh, so you were doing some movies in uh, in Minnesota. You moved to LA, mm-hmm. and the first movie you do is directed by my friend Dante. Yes, bro, what happened? Bro, what yeah. happened? Yep, yep. Yeah, I, we, when I, like, the first month I went there, I got booked on that, like, right away. Like, the, like the, no, it was actually the second, when I, when I was there for the second week of moving there, that's how I got booked for that. And he's so awesome and sweet, and the yeah. cast was so cool. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know I was going to be actually, like, featured in it like hardcore featured and in, in speaking and, and I was like I was there I, like we shot for a couple of days and I just I just went up and asked him like hey can I have a rope can I have a line can I just have one line he's like okay I'm like really like yeah you're gonna have a line with Bobby anyways because someone didn't come I'm like oh, okay right. <laughs> so, awesome. that was cool. so like uh, Bobby Lee he was like one of my f- favorite comedians too from the Mad TV and I was so mm-hmm. honored and excited to actually like have a role with him even if it was like a one-nighter I was so blessed and happy I I, I just loved it it was I, I was like oh my god <laughs> Aww, <laughs> so, awesome. I was like I was so awesome and he was so goofy and sweet and I'm like trying to take a picture of him and he kept doing goofy faces i'm like come on you're <laughs> like laughing at him because <laughs> he kept making me laugh that, i'm like come awesome. on i'm so happy with you was it through backstage magazine or was it through an agent or how'd you get that oh it was on craigslist <laughs> Don was advertising on craigslist i think so yeah i think it was oh, on okay, craigslist. Cool. but back you know back then it was like you know safe and okay and stuff and then you know now uh, you gotta yeah, watch I don't know out. About that. Uh, yeah, it was. You gotta watch out for stuff like that. The reason they had to shut that down. Yeah, so I was like, I, I've been seeing that too, and I was like, what in the world? So I was yeah. like, I don't go there no more because of like. Bro, what, what happened? happened? Casting yeah, call. But I think it was. It was. I think it was on. You know, the talent uh, Craigslist. It was on something. No, this was. A, I mean, it was just. A, this is a decent movie. This uh, Anna, this movie, bro, what happened? It's kind of a. Uh, dude where's my car kind of take off yeah kennedy was in it bobby lee was in it uh dante and uh, uh rebecca falcon who's uh dante's wife and uh-huh. just uh you know uh just a bunch of people that uh yeah a bunch of my old friends were in this and i never heard of it but i'm glad yeah. i'm glad you were uh, i'm glad you were in it and uh, you 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 were the uh, 
it says like a bikini babe, but you weren't wearing a bikini, so I don't know where. No, where it was like a. It's a weird swimsuit. It's like a one piece swimsuit, which was. Really was. Yeah, I couldn't really figure it yeah. out. It was like a cute swimsuit, but I don't know. I put swimsuit. I guess they put bikini. I don't. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm just. I'm just read. Maybe I was imagining bikini. Yeah. Head, but, uh, <laughs> like, no, it's a swimsuit. It's a swimsuit, but I, when I saw it, I thought you were like a or something. I like, it didn't look like a swimsuit to me, but uh, what, what can I tell you? But it, and then uh, and then you just haven't stopped working since. You've just been uh, getting getting a bunch of roles. Yeah, I well, um, I'm trying not to do extra stuff anymore. Like I'm I'm actually going to retire to being an extra on things. What? Mm -hmm. Because uh, from the car accident and, and from the surgery, uh, it's too much for me now. Okay. And since sometimes some of the, you know, some of the movies are outside, I can't be outside that long anymore because I get major headaches and I get sick. And, and, and it's upsetting because, like, this person who hit me just ruined my body and my mind. And now I, I can't do a lot like I wanted to. That kind of mm -hmm. upset me a lot. Um so you're doing a lot more than a lot of people have to choose to do. Yeah, that's, that's right. You're writing a novel, you're you're prepping two movies. That's mm -hmm. that's yeah. a lot of work. It, it 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 is it is, but I'm very I'm I I just love it. I'm very passionate, and I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. And you've been um, like on on you know you've already done Shameless and other great shows like that. How was Shameless? I was a I was a huge fan. It's not on anymore of Shameless. Um, it when we first when I first did. Did Shameless? It was in Chicago. They filmed it in Chicago, and it was really cool because I it, I was just a, I was just an extra, but I did I did have like a little cool little little just a little part, but it was like mm -hmm. it, 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 interacting with the the little uh, I guess it was one of the main kids, mm -hmm. but yeah, they they filmed it in Chicago, and then I guess they moved it. I don't remember where they moved the shooting, but yeah, it was it was interesting. It was fun and. The, the cast were very nice. All of them actually were very nice. They just came up to us and started talking to us. And you know me, learning from, uh, you know, being in acting schools and in the rules about being an extra, you don't talk to the actors. You can't mm -hmm. go up and take pictures and do all this stuff. But nobody came to us and wanted to talk and stuff like that. And I'm like, what do I do? I don't want to get kicked off because I'm talking Aww. to them. <laughs> but yeah, they were so nice and they, they were just being, you know, humans. Like, that's they're cool, they're yeah. just they're just like us too. So it's like, oh, that's cool. Well, I, I, unless you know, like, except for Bobby Lee, you you went right up to him. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I've noticed uh, you've played a wolf in a lot of things. Yeah, my my thing is a wolf. <laughs> it goes back to the uh, team J the team Jacob thing. If you were an animal, would you be a wolf? Is that what it is? Yeah, but I I'm actually a Kikapu. I'm Native American, and so. Mm -hmm. I found out that our tribe is very rare and we're actually called a wolf clan. Uh, Kikapu means wanderer. So the, the tribe I was with is called, wolf, it, it, they're, they're wolf clan. It's a wolf clan. So I was like, that's pretty cool. cool. So it's kind of like Twilight, you know, mm -hmm. the wolf clan, they turn into the, like You're wolf. on the wrong side. You're on the yeah. wrong side. <laughs> so that was really cool. I did a lot of research on my tribe because we're so rare. There's like not a lot of, of us. But we are, uh, there's some in Eagle Pass, the tribe is in Eagle Pass, there's some in, um, I, I, I'm, I think it was K uh, Kentucky, if I, I might be wrong, oh, Kansas and Oklahoma, I think. But mm -hmm. we, it, it's also called, we are also a wolf clan, it's a wolf clan um, tribe. But I, I loved wolf, I, wolves, I always thought my, you know, past life I was a wolf, and my mom also was a wolf lover, and, and that's how, well, we were so, attracted to the wolves because we, we are wolf we are we're a wolf clan <laughs> mm -hmm. you know we are one with wolves. barked on cue i don't know what happened <laughs> and and uh but the yeah the, well to tell you the truth it's, it's my mom's birthday today and she happy birthday away. mom she passed away three years ago from breast right. cancer so even even no more reason to keep your memory alive happy birthday mom Yep. yep. So I've, I've been celebrating that and, and just keep, you know, doing what I, what she wanted me to do and be proud of, of, of my achievements. And I'm sure she was, she was proud already. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. She is. Sometimes she'll visit me and she's a, she's a prankster. She likes to do goofy tricks with me and, and I, 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 you know, I believe in all that and she, she's just funny. 
Am what's I just last, what's, what's the last prank that your late mother pulled on you? Um, when she, what was it? It was a couple days. Oh, this guy. It was a couple. This is my mom's bracelet, mm -hmm. and it has the breast cancer symbol. And okay. so this bunny, I lost a necklace, which I was very happy it went missing because I even told the universe to lose it because it was my ex fiance's mom, and I don't care for them anymore for what they did. And so that went missing. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go and put this on the bracelet. Mm -hmm. And I, I put it in the, I call it the cigarette. What is it? The cigarette in the car. It's that thing where you put cigarettes in. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. Part. The ashtray. Ash, yeah, the ashtray. So I put it yeah. in there. And it's, it's it stays. Like, it stays closed. Like, you, mm -hmm. you got to pull it. You got to do like a little bit of strength to open it. Well, I didn't do it, and so I went home, did some things, then came back, and the ashtray was open. And I was like, oh, you're funny, Mom. <laughs> wanted me to get the bracelet done so I can wear it. So I finally got it done. So she does a little things here and there to let me know that she's being silly and that okay. she loves me. Aww, that's sweet. Well, you're part Mayan as well. Yes, I'm Mayan, Kikapu, yep. So I'm learning really more of a... I'm, like I said, Kikapu is a little bit more rare, and I'm just trying to research more about that. And I know some of the native tribes also don't know much about Kikapu too. So it's it's like I'm I'm doing more research on that more. That's great, but like 2012, like you could tell, you know, did you think the world was ending since you were part Mayan? Or <laughs> I wish she was. Like you have to <laughs> That's some inside, uh, inside information on that. <laughs> that I don't know. Like <laughs> maybe it's 2020. Oh wait, it is kind of ending. <laughs> no, we gotta we gotta have 2021 and 2022 for for your movies yep. to come out at least, and then. Yep. But uh, Wolf Trap, you did a short movie Wolf Trap. Yep, I did that. It's just a goofy short film. I I was bored and wanted to do something up in Minnesota since I was there and I you know my my friends are my family up there I love my family mm -hmm. up there and they are down to do anything and mm -hmm. whatever so I was like you, what, you guys want to do a silly you know skit I'm like yeah um it's what trap has to do with somebody that I I really loved and care and he's always calling me a wolf trap to him because he thinks I'm a crazy person. <laughs> no. So, yeah, so I was like, you know, I don't want to be in your wolf trap. You're crazy. And I'm like, okay. It's just some silly thing that we made up. And so I made a little silly skit. And this just is a, with the poster there. Looks, looks gruesome. Yeah, it, it, I and like it. Like blood it. And stuff. it doesn't look like a silly thing. That's cute but, to us because we all love horror. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah and, it's a different and, mindset. Yeah, and it, so I made I made up a story of, of a um, a shape. Well, I'm actually doing a feature film of of that, but it's a it's a story of um, um, no one has ever done anything mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. her, and it's it's uh, what's that goddess? Uh, Lupa Lupa the the wolf goddess who uh, trains demigods. I'm saying it wrong. It's like L O P O. She's the one that took Lobo. care of the humans. She mm -hmm. took care of the like the demigod humans. I don't remember who they were. There were two of them, mm -hmm. and she took care of them. And she she trained demigods. Well, there's not a lot of stories about her, and this is like I love mythological, uh, you know, myth mythological creatures goddesses yeah. gods and stuff like that Wolves. Yeah. Wolves, so, yeah. there's nothing a lot of her so i'm doing this movie which ha kind of has to do with the wolf trap but it's a it's about you know her daughter who's who is half demigod and half wolf and she's a shape shifter Ooh. well she forgets her memories because her mom you know um did did some magic to to have her erase her memories because one of the gods was like obsessed and in love with you know her mom the wolf god goddess so mm -hmm. he wanted her for herself because she was the most powerful goddess of of them all because she's over here training demigods mm -hmm. and so he was obsessed with her wanted you know her for her for himself and he found out that she got pregnant with pups you know a pack of pups who are also half you know humans 
Ooh. So he comes after her in rage and jealousy and pretty much almost mass almost massacres everybody except for one female wolf pup that he that she saved and just erased her memories to not remember who she really is and who and what happened. So in her journey, so it's kind of like almost Red Sonia, Conan the Barbarian, and Hercules, where he was a demigod and doesn't know where he he was from until he does this you know journey of adventures. So this is going to be and and go ahead. Yeah. And, uh, you know, going on this adventure to find himself and who he really is. But then, you know, the the bad guy, the, the god is like trying to stop that. So he, to, to stop her from, you know, finding her mom or if she knows who her mom is or if she, her mom is still alive. But then he falls, in, he falls cuckoo in love with her, too. So I was like, I want to do something like that, too. Wow. So this will be said in medieval times. This will be like a sword and source for her. It's going to be more of barbarian style, like, you know, yeah. Zena. Yep. Zena wrote like a uh, red Sonia kind of thing. Cause we don't really have a lot of those. And, and I miss those. Like I miss those. Yeah, I, I do want. too. I love, yeah. like I said, I love eighties and I love the fact mm-hmm. that there's a lot of barbarian movies like that. So I was like, Ooh, I want to do it. I want to do something like that. I want to bring that back. So well, it's three, it's three movies that Hannah can't wait to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, <laughs> but tell, 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 tell us about your dancing because I've seen some of those videos too. Uh, well, since now it's, I can't dance anymore because the surgery and the accident. Yeah. Which also. You were you were quite a dancer, and, and there yeah, were I do a lot of different. Yeah, different freestyle freestyle dancing, hip hop. I'm more into like more artsy kind of dance performance kind mm-hmm. of thing. But yeah, I miss that and I really love it. And yeah, so it does but, me. upsets me. I, I'm mm. sure it does. And uh, but it looks like you're transitioning into writing and directing now. Yep. So, yep. You know, I'm gonna that's... focus on just directing, writing, and make and making movies now. Yeah. <laughs> and who are your favorite directors as far as the horror genre? Uh, well, Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. There's uh it's not a well, it's not a horror movie, but it's kind of a cult classic. It's Disturbed Behavior. I don't know who the director oh, yeah. is at, but I, that's like one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. And then this new director that came in, um, who did um, uh, Ma- uh, Mandy uh, with Nicolas Cage. I like him. I like mm-hmm. how he's very artsy and stuff, and and the way he he does the 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 story, but. Yeah, I really, I really liked it, and it was funny because uh, I go, to, I go to these like clinic studies to make money, <laughs> and people were telling me, you know, Robert pa- Robert Rodriguez did that. He went to clinic studies to make money, and during that time, he writes his uh, scripts and stuff, and that's how he got, he got this that one big movie he did. I'm like, what? Well, I'm following his footsteps too. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, everybody's gonna start somewhere, and uh, oh yeah, he did yeah. a mariachi for seven grand. Yep. You already raised fifteen thousand for your movie. Yeah. Well, you, it's gonna be twice the budget. It's gonna be twice as, twice as good looking as, as our El Mariachi was. Uh-huh. And you got stars. So, yeah. uh, uh, it, And tell everybody because you still have the Indiegogo up. So there's something yes. people still can get. Yes, we. Well, we're waiting for another uh, talented actress to come on board. It sounds like she is, but I'm still, you know, I got to wait for that, you know, yes, green light thing. And then we're going to have a perk with her. If it's a green, I mean, from the way she sounds, yes, but I'm still like, I always have to make sure like, okay, are you sure? Are you sure? What do, you need? Mm-hmm. what do we need? <laughs> so yeah, we have uh, more perks up. We actually have, uh, well, we have to have, you know, creepy toys. Uh, in Santa Claus red bag. So we had, um, Chris, uh, you know, toys made. We have one that's, uh, it's called the reject Ted zombie. It's a teddy bear, but he's all like zombed out and all like his insides are showing. How uh, cute. <laughs> he's really cute. So we have two of those big perks we're giving away while so, you know, had them having a uh, producer, uh, having their name in the beginning of the film and a couple of beanies and hoodies. And then we have, um one 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 more perk to be in the movie and get killed by rudolph and then we have a major one where you get to be on the back cover uh in the trailer in the beginning of the movie and your Mm -hmm. credits at the beginning and end and um 
some other good goodie stuff for that too. So we How have. How much does it to get killed by Rudolph? Uh, five hundred. Five hundred. Okay. <laughs> yep, five hundred. Yeah. Uh, and the the big ones, you know, just to have other stuff to be in the DVD and stuff is like it was like two thousand dollars. I might go down a little bit, but yeah, we have uh four wait thirty two days left, and we're doing we're also doing a Halloween a Halloween costume contest just to push it out more and push out the Facebook movie page and Instagram movie page. And you get to vote. Um, So we're starting, uh, you know, in the uh, the 1st of October and you just may, you know, you know, dress up and put your makeup on. And if you look really cool, three people will win. The first prize winner will win money and a pop figure of, uh, a monster that I'm waiting tonight because he's over here. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's talking to me while I'm talking to you. I'm like, can you give me the elf? Oh, well, okay, it's an elf. We have an elf. We have an elf. God dang it. Well, I wanted to. Sur- I know some people already know it's there's going to be an elf. Well, we have a sled too. We got a Santa sled. Claus. You got Rudolph. You got a sled. You got to have an elf. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have, but he's super creepy cute and I love it. He's oh, a nice. tiny little guy. He's a clay animated. And then we, and then the sled is alive. He's a he's alive. He wait. He's a, a live monster too. So it's like kind of like uh, Christina the car. Uh huh. So yeah, yeah, it's a sled. Oh okay. It's a sled. <laughs> so we have a lot of uh, monster elements that just kill. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we do you have put a creepy elf on your shelf. Yep. Yep. Creepy elf on the shelf. <laughs> and um, yeah, we have a couple toys. Uh, so the zombie teddy bear, a spidey batty. He's a spider bat. Uh, doll too and then we have the nutty nuns they're dolls too but they're all creepy nuns so we have a couple of toys that you know will will be nuns are always scary did you grow up catholic no okay (laughs) am i catholic i don't know i don't i'm just a really open person i like you never got smacked in the knuckles by a nun oh yes i did yeah i got i got uh, whatever you call it ruler whipped (laughs) yeah that (laughs) yeah (laughs) water holy whatever yeah yeah Yeah, i got that and i'm like yeah but i'm like i'm pretty much open-minded person with all kinds of religion and all kinds of culture i like to learn everybody's culture and you know their religion i'm not i'm not like "Mm, yeah other people (laughs) you're not judgmental nope (laughs) but uh so that's great and uh so and one one last question let's hand i I know hand and you are going to be bfs right after the show because and I can't wait to see all your movies. And and, and you have been a, a delightful guest, but I do have to ask one last question. And then we'll, we're going to have you do all the plugs and see, tell everybody how they can enter the, co- the costume contest, how they can the, contribute to the movie. We, we're going to let you do whatever, whatever plugs you have. What was your favorite ha- Halloween costume when you were a kid? Oh, Halloween costume? Freddy Krueger. You were Freddy, Freddy Krueger? Krueger? I was Freddy. I, I'm such a boy. I was Freddy Krueger. I was the crow. I was a, a dude vampire. What else? What cool. I was? Well, I was like a witch, but I was more into like like Freddy Krueger. Oh yeah, Michael. I was Jason. I and I, and my favorite was the crow. Everybody loved it. I think this year I'm gonna dress like the crow. I have all the crow stuff. So right. everyone's like, dude, you look like Brandon D. I'm like, I know. I'm awesome. <laughs> I had it awesome. all. I was like, everyone was like, dude, your costume's awesome. I was like, thank you. And I'm a girl. <laughs> so, How did you yeah, hair when you were Freddy Krueger? How'd you do that? Freddy Krueger? I just got the, I got, well, actually what I did, since I could, we back then we couldn't afford stuff. So I just like put makeup on me to make it look like him. Okay. And then I, I made the glove and then I did some fake, you know, um, what are they? The what is it? Uh, the plastic, Blades, yeah. <laughs> the plastic fork or the knife. Oh, so cool. I make I make my costumes because I didn't right. have we didn't have any you know money back then. So I just made my stuff. I can relate, yeah. <laughs> Y'all can relate. I remember that too. My mom, she used to go through her closet like for yeah. we didn't have any money, so she's like, "Oh, you're gonna be a gypsy this year. I'm gonna dress you up in my scarves and jewelry." <laughs> yep, yeah, that's what yeah. we did, and and I'm gonna yeah. still do that. Oh, like I can I'm not gonna. I don't want to go buy costumes. I just because I could just make my own, and it was really mm-hmm. fun just making our own costumes. <laughs> so you've always been creative ever since you were tiny, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yep. my mama helped me out too because she's like, "What do you want to be?" I was like, "Freddy Krueger." So she's like, Aww. "All right, just do it." <laughs> I didn't have <laughs> yeah. the mask. I just put makeup on me to look like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, through, through all, throughout it all, 
you've made your mother proud and you're going to continue making your mother proud. And you continue making movies that we want to see yeah. uh, with lots of blood and gore and wolves mm -hmm. and all sorts of things. Tell everybody how they can, uh, get, I mean, there's still stuff available, uh, mm -hmm. Christmas Slasher, how they can uh, participate in the costume contest and how they can get some stuff. Um, yeah, so we will be, we're going to have it on the Christmas Slasher movie page on Facebook and also Christmas Slasher, uh, at Christmas Slasher movie on Instagram. And we'll be starting that up on October 1st. Mm -hmm. And so all you have to do is just follow the rules, follow the pages, tag your friends, have them follow, and then do two to three uh, photos with you in, in, in you know, be creative, make your makeup, do something with a costume. We more we want to do more like of the Christmas horror theme. So we want to say, make, does it have to be Christmas? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we would like that because since it's a, you know, a horror Christmas, you know, a holiday horror, we like to see more of like being creative of like, you know, like a zombie Santa or zombie Miss Claus or a vampire Santa, anything that has to be, you know, crossovers. We, we want to like Santa. Mm hmm and, and that Twilight Santa, and then um, you get to win money. There's first, second, third place. You win money, and then the first place we're actually making the Elf Pop figures. What is it like? Is it fun Funko? Funko Pop. Funko, fun how you say it? Funko Pop. Funko Pop. Funko Pop. And and um, we uh go go and. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, please we, go we, we, that I'm on my podcast. Oh my god! Sorry, everybody. No, you must, you need to <laughs> yes, go I will eat. Tell, <laughs> tell everybody your website and how people get a hold of you and all of Goodbye. your social media. Oh, and then sorry. Um, oh my god, damn. That was embarrassing. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> I'll cut it out. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, what was I? Oh, uh, funk. Is it, pop. Uh, yeah, we're doing an elf. Uh, uh, figuring for the for the costume and also on the perk and then later on we're going to be making more of the all the other monsters because that's what we're waiting on is the, the monsters to be done and the second prize is one of the zombie teddy bears and then third will be a shirt and something else I don't remember oh and a beanie <laughs> so if you're creative people it's mm -hmm. gonna be good yeah are you gonna are you gonna mm -hmm. enter mark are you gonna enter hannah i'm gonna enter you should. You guys should. Yeah. It would be so much fun. I, I think we're disqualified because you were on our podcast, but uh, I don't know. Well, just for fun, we could just dress up. <laughs> well, I don't think it matters. It's, 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 right. no. did you ever Everybody speak? can do it. I mean, this year has been really bleh. And You're putting the fun I, back in Halloween. Is what yeah, yeah. let's put the fun back in Halloween, even if, like, oh, it's they cancel Halloween. Heck no. I don't want this. No, no. Halloween is mm -hmm. not canceled. No. No. Nope. Uh, Hate that crap I'm like come yeah. on and there's so <laughs> many ways to do things for halloween you can't don't don't cancel halloween we're so yeah we're nice. still figuring out, but we got it. a lot of stuff yeah yeah um, we do it. oh and we're also uh we have a website um that's live and we actually are going to do the merch we're going to open the merch in of october because i'm just waiting on a uh, a couple other merch to come in so we'll have a a merch store store that people can buy the christmas slasher items very that's good. cool I mean, mm -hmm. The merch sells great. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the movie might, uh, the movie, I mean, 15,000 might be peanuts. You might get uh, the merch starts blowing up. You might get a, a Blumhouse or somebody yeah. knocking on your door. Let's make it a real big budget million dollar movie. Heck yeah, that'd be awesome. Like, we're still going. We're over 17,000 now, and we're still adding more merch and stuff. I'm, I'm just waiting for people to get me the toys so I can add them into that. That's but great. yeah, we're doing pretty good. All I'm happy. Toys. And, Mm. And, and check out Destiny Soria. Uh, you have the Wix page, not the author. Your author is DestinySoria.com. You have the Wix page. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We and, have two. It's Lady Destiny, and then you have uh, Christmas Slasher, and then my other one is just Destiny Soria. But yes. they, they'll find me. It's I'm easy. <laughs> and uh, and and follow you on Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram. Just go to Christmas Slasher on Instagram. This will be airing on. October 2nd, so by the time this airs, it'll be live. So dress up in your best Christmas horror theme yeah. costume. You may you you may win you you may win some cool perch. Yeah. You ever see like uh, Santa Claus uh, Conquerors of Martians, uh, Destiny? Huh? You ever see Santa Claus Conquerors of Martians? Uh-uh. 
Okay, that, that, there's a custom idea I'm not going to do. That was a movie in the 60s. It's one of the worst movies ever, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's one of those Ed Wood, like, you just start laughing. Like, the room, just you, so bad, you just start laughing. I like your movies. <laughs> I have to see that. I got I to gotta get back to getting a TV and watching stuff. I don't have a TV, and I don't watch yeah. stuff. No, yeah. I don't. Some people are like, did you see this one's new? I'm like, no. I mean, I finally okay. catched up with uh, Babysitter, Alive, uh, that train one, which made a lot of awards. I finally watched those. Um, anyway. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, Dexter, you have been a delight, and I hope you come back again. You really have. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and follow you on all social media. Christmas yeah. Slasher is coming, whether you like it or not. Yeah, follow and get in, do the contest. You, may, you win money. You win money. <laughs> and, uh, and go to Hail Hannah Box 666 on Instagram. And also check out her other podcast, Vegans Uncensored. And uh, go to Goth Comedian and all social media. Everybody, have a wonderfully creepy week. Uh, yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs>